Amen. Good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. 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 Thankful that the, the weather is cooperating and becoming more my style. I like that a lot. That's a wonderful feeling. Wonderful feeling. I invite you this morning to open your Bibles, if you will, to uh, Mark's Gospel, Chapter 1, again. In Mark's Gospel, Chapter 1. And we're just kind of picking up where we left off last week, and in about verse 29, where we will be. If you'll just hold your Bibles open there, we will get to that in just a little bit. But before we get to that point, shall we recite our motto together once again today? All together? <coughs> Heavenly Father, I give you permission to speak to me, to speak through me, to do whatever you want with my life. I trust the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. You know, two of our greatest presidents were born in February. Did you know that? George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. You knew that, right? All the kids were like, yeah, sure. No problem. But one of the things I, I love about Abraham Lincoln was his sense of humor, even though I didn't know him personally, I know some of you think I did. <laughs> In reading about him, that uh, Abe Lincoln laughed at himself, and especially at his appearance. He was reportedly a very plain looking man, and I uh, particularly liked one story that I read about Lincoln that he told on himself, actually. He said, Sometimes I feel like the ugly man who met an old woman traveling through a forest. The old woman said, you're the ugliest man I ever met. Well, I can't help it, said the ugly man. No, I guess not, the woman admitted. But the least you can do is stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> he told that on himself. It, it just takes a, a great deal of character to be able to laugh at yourself like that. And, uh, it, and it helps. You know, know how many times a day I laugh at myself, especially when other people start it. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank God for, for men like Washington and Lincoln. They made a significant impact on history. Nevertheless, I think their significance is dwarfed by a simple carpenter who lived in the little town of Nazareth. 2,000 plus years ago. In fact, to uh, paraphrase what Robert W. Youngs said in his book entitled, What It Means to Be a Christian, Robert Youngs said this, Human beings have always praised and honored certain people in their own generation, but Jesus they have considered as an object of devotion. People recite poems about Paul Revere, but they sing hymns about Jesus. They construct monuments in memory of their statesmen, communion tables in memory of Jesus. Before kings and queens, men bow and women curtsy, but before Jesus, they all meet in prayer. I like what he said. I like that. <clears throat> Keep it handy. You see, our lesson for today from Mark's Gospel just illustrates for us why Jesus captured the devotion of the people of his time. If we find here it was the Sabbath. Jesus and his disciples had been in the synagogue. You remember that we talked about last week where Jesus healed the man of an impure spirit. And so here we pick up again in verse 29. If you have your Bibles there of Mark's Gospel chapter 1, we pick up in verse 29. That as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon, Peter, and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. And then Mark tells us here, they, the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. I had to look at that twice. I was like, what? So much for the role of women in that time. She began to wait on them. Soon as she was healed, I guess no rest for the weary, right? She was well, so she was supposed to fill her expected role in the household and began to wait on. But of course, besides my warped mind, the point of the story is that 
Jesus healed her. And as he healed, just as he did many, many others around there, and it didn't take very long for the word to get around about Jesus and his wondrous acts, casting out demons and impure spirits, healing the sick, doing all these things. Let's pick it back up again, verse 32 here in our, in our gospel story. That evening, says Mark, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. Wow. Now, I don't know if you picked up on something here in that, in that passage, but it said, after sunset, the people brought, brought to Jesus all those who were sick. Did you ever wonder why they waited so late in the day? Why in the world did they wait till sunset? That's what I was wondering. Why didn't they come when he was there at the beginning? And then it dawned on me that it was because it was the Sabbath. And pious people wouldn't travel on the Sabbath. So they had to wait till the sun went down. Then they could, they could travel. They could make it there. And so they came as soon as they could. As soon as they could. They wanted to be near Jesus. They wanted to get in on what was happening. In this Gospel of Mark, there are, in fact, ten consecutive stories that tell about Jesus healing people of various diseases and conditions. Ten consecutive stories through the Gospel of Mark. It's a very significant part of the Gospel. And it's the story that tells us and the part that tells us that where Jesus is, there is healing. Where Jesus is, there is healing. Amen? And that's what I want us to look at. There's three things. Number one, first of all, sometimes the healing is physical. Sometimes the healing is physical. In fact, the esteemed Bible scholar, Dr. William Barclay, says that Peter's mother-in-law was suffering from what the Talmud called a burning fever. <coughs> It was and still is a very prevalent in that particular part of Galilee, says Dr. Barclay, that the Talmud actually lays down the methods of dealing with this malady. The method of dealing with it is a knife made holy of iron was tied by a braid of hair to a thorn bush. And then for four days, one would recite one verse a day from Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 and 5, 2 through 5. And on the fourth day, the bush was to be cut down and a certain magical formula was pronounced and thus the cure was supposed to be achieved. There it was. So here it is, Jesus referring to that, and it's kind of noteworthy, I think, for us to remember that Jesus completely disregarded all the paraphernalia of popular magic. And with a gesture and with a word of unique authority that he had, and power, he healed this woman. He healed her. Disregarding the popular magic <laughs> with his unique authority, healed this woman. You see, where Jesus is, there is healing. Where he is. And sometimes that healing is physical. In one of his books entitled, Getting Through What You're Going Through, Robert A. Schuler, this is the son of the older Schuler. He tells about Lori Jones. Lori Jones was the wife of actor Dean Jones. Some of you are old enough to remember Dean Jones. You remember he starred in a lot of Walt Disney films such as The Love Buck uh, and The Shaggy D.A. and the television show The Teddy Bears and those kind of things. Dean Jones. Well, in February of 1974, his wife, Lori, and Dean, they took a vacation to Mexico City. And one day when they were sightseeing, they decided to tour a Roman Catholic cathedral. As they followed the tour guide, Dean began making offhand comments like, this place must be impossible to eat. You see, to Dean, the cathedral was, it was just another architectural site. And he wasn't really prepared for the priest's final remark at the end of the tour. The priest said, if some of you need physical healing, the priest said, now is the time to 
prayer. Kind of caught him off guard. He wasn't prepared for that. Nor was Dean prepared for his wife's response to the priest's suggestion. Lori Jones turned to her husband and said, Let's pray for my arthritis. You see, Lori was taking over 30 aspirins a day to relieve the pain in her hands. Some of you probably know what that's like. It's a miracle that her stomach could even handle that many aspirins. But that morning, Dean had massaged Lori's hands to alleviate the cramping and the pain so she could go sightseeing and giving her some kind of temporary relief. But she wanted more. She, she wanted a permanent solution. And Dean said he almost laughed when Lori mentioned praying about her arthritis. And the only thing that kept him from laughing at her was the thought of her intense pain. And he considered her suggestion very seriously. He said, he said, a man of great faith I was not. But I couldn't resist my wife's request. And he thought, what have I got to lose? And so he bowed his head and he prayed silently. He just prayed, God, heal Lori's arthritis. Lori's prayer was much longer than that. However, within about five minutes, they were walking out of the cathedral. And Lori, his wife, said, I think something happened in there. Great, Dean answered. If praying makes you feel better, then great, fine. Three days later, Lori stopped taking aspirin altogether. And Dean watched her, he said, move her hands without wincing in pain. Surely, surely this was a miracle. But he questioned, when at last? They waited for the pain to return. But two weeks passed, still no pain. A month later, still no pain. A year later, still no pain. Two years later, no pain, and on until today. Lori had truly been healed. I wish, I wish I could say to you that every prayer for physical healing is answered just that surely. I wish I could. If I did, I know many of you you would surround me after the service with questions like, why didn't God heal my daughter? Or someone might say to me very painfully, I prayed night and day for an answer to prayer. I prayed night and day. That's why the church, I think, is very cautious about prayer and healing. We're very cautious about prayer and healing. It's a very complex subject for us to understand. And some of us, it's hard for us to understand. But this one thing I know and I can tell you without a shadow of any doubt. Jesus does heal. Amen. I have no doubt about that. I wouldn't be standing here before you today. And I can just say to you and admonish you to trust Him. When you're hurting just as much as when you are healthy. Trust Him when you are hurting just as much as you trust Him when you're healthy. And I can tell you this. I haven't yet to run across anyone who is ever sorry for praying and trusting even if physical healing never came. Jesus heals. And sometimes... The healing is physical. Let me go to number two. Sometimes the healing is emotional. Sometimes the healing is emotional. Robert H. Schuler, this is the dad this time, younger Schuler, dad of the Crystal Cathedral fame, in his book, Don't Throw Away Tomorrow, he, he told in that book an important story about former Secretary of State Dean Russ. Russ held his high office during the Kennedy and the Johnson uh, administrations. 
Global tensions called for high-level meetings between our government and other leading governments. The Cold War was still very real and alive. And when Russ, when Russ's plane landed in Washington from a European conference he was at, and he walked down the steps to meet the press, the first reporter shoved a microphone in his face and shouted at him, What are the chances for peace, Mr. Secretary? And the world waited and listened. And after a strong pause, Dean Rusk answered, It all depends on whether a man is rational or emotional creature. That's quite an unusual answer for a government official, isn't it? He said it all depends on whether the man, a man is a rational or emotional creature. Robert Schuler said he admittedly scoffed at the Secretary of State's answer because Schuler had just graduated after receiving an advanced academic degree. And he says we all know that man is a rational creature. He thought self-righteously to himself. It was a point of view that was shared by many during that era. But then he said after 40 years of ministry, Robert Schuler said he changed his mind. Because the, sub, the subconscious, he decided, is ahead of the conscious. The head may lead the way, but it's the subconscious, the emotions, the heart that will ultimately have its way. The brain, he determined, has an unlimited ability to rationalize any position. It's true. Therefore, he concluded, that human beings are first and last emotional creatures. Emotional. And I believe he's right. Because there are people who carry around hurts that last a lifetime. People who carry around hurts that last a lifetime. And their friends and family will say that, oh, get over it. It's been 20 years already. Get over it. And they know within their brain that they should get it, let it go. If only they could. It would be better for them if they could. But somehow, the hurt just doesn't heal. Doesn't. I have only one suggestion for you this morning. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Pray daily for His healing power. Pray daily. It's a daily effort of prayer for His healing power. In fact, I ran across something recently in an issue of a Reader's Digest that some of you might find helpful in seeking healing for your emotions. Dr. Tanya Marie Lerman is a Stanford psychological anthropologist, and she wrote a book entitled When God Talks Back. Some of you may have seen it. Before her book, she said she studied evangelical Christians who claim to have two-way conversations with God. And she discovered that these believers had three prayer techniques in common. Three common techniques. In prayer. First of all, they used imagination. Imagination. That when praying the 23rd Psalm, for example, they not only saw the Lord as an actual shepherd, but they also felt themselves lying down in green pastures and being led beside the still waters. They used their imagination to make the scripture become real to them. The second technique they used was emotion. Imagination, emotion. And while immersed in Psalm 23, for example, while walking through the valley of the shadow of death, they recall losing someone that they loved very dearly in their life. And letting themselves re-experience that sorrow made the Scripture personal to them. Re-experiencing it. Imagination, emotion. And the final prayer technique they used was connection. Connection. They imagine God as their shepherd walking beside them through the valley and having an actual conversation with them, she said. That's when they said God spoke to them. The connection. God spoke to them during that time. You might try that in your times of prayer. Imagination and emotion and connection with God, with the Scriptures. But of course... Hurts are not always from the past. 
Sometimes we need help going through current situations, don't we? They're not always in the past. Sometimes there are current things we need help with. I, I once read of, of a mother with an adopted teenage daughter, and the girl had been through a great deal of emotional damage and was doing her best to spread her hurt around by verbally abusing her adopted mother. And when things were at their worst, this mother said she would sit on a meditation cushion and light a candle in the darkness and wrap herself in what she came to call her prayer shawl. With the help of these concrete aids, she was able to continue loving someone who was so very difficult to love. We all have to find what works for us. We all have to find it. But the testimony of Scripture is that Jesus heals. Jesus heals. And it's true. You remember he, he healed Mary Magdalene with seven demons, the Scripture tells us. We don't know what those demons were. Seven hurts from the past, perhaps. Times when she was abused. We don't know. It's, it's not an easy subject. But healing can come when we bring our hurts to Jesus, whether they're physical hurts or emotional hurts. Bring them to Jesus. Let Him heal you of those hurts. Number three, at times, the healing Jesus brings is relational. Relational. Relationships are so delicate. They're so delicate, whether they're relationships at the office or at school or our primary relationships in the home. Relationships are delicate. Maybe, maybe some of you right now are praying for a relationship in your family. Maybe it's a brother or a sister. Maybe it's parents. Maybe, maybe it's your own marriage. Maybe it's some, a marriage of somebody you know. Relationships. One night at the dinner table, a wife commented to her husband. She said, when we were first married, you took the small piece of steak and gave me the large one. Now you take the large one and leave me the small one. You don't love me anymore. <laughs> Nonsense, darling, he said. You just cook better now. You <laughs> really, huh? And it's true. We, we find it so easy to joke about marital problems. But I'm here to tell you, you know, that they are a, a heartache to many adults. And they are a crushing blow to many children who suffer because of those problems. Mm. There was a study years ago in Psychology Today. It was a study of marriages that last. Most studies are done on why marriages come apart. But this study was on why marriages last. And some of the conclusions were surprising to me. For example, the research showed that for both husbands and wives, the most important factor for marital success was when each of them would say, my spouse is my best friend. My spouse is my best friend. And in a day when marriage counselors are advising couples to develop separate interests and go their own ways, the, the overwhelming percentage of the couples in marriages that last do everything together. Together. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have... But, you know, I try to drag my wife out golfing. She just, <laughs> she just doesn't, she doesn't enjoy that at all. She doesn't like it. She tries to drag me out shopping. I'm not a very good shopper. <laughs> so there are some things we do separately. But on the overall scale, scale of things, we do things together. We do ministry together. That's why we're here together. <clears throat> your, your hurts become ours. We share those. We pray with those together. One of the most important factors <coughs> concerns give and take in a marriage. One of the most important factors concerns give and take. And the authors of that particular study found very few marriages that were perfectly equal. 
In fact, one woman said she was married 44 years. She said she would advise all young couples to be willing to give 70%, but expect only 30%. Give 70%, but expect 30%. In the long run, this particular study showed that the giving and taking should balance out. That if either partner enters a marriage determined that all transactions must be equal, the marriage will suffer. As one husband put it, sometimes I give far more than I receive, and sometimes I receive far more than I give. But he said, my wife does the same thing. If we weren't willing to do that, we would have broken up a long time ago. So true. You see, marital fads come and go. But there is one constant that was true 50 years ago and it's still true today. The family that prays together stays together. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the family that prays together stays together. And whereas the statistics for marriages coming apart are are as dismal overall for church people as they are for non-church people. It's, it's not true for couples who are committed in a serious way to their faith. That if you want your marriage to last, invite Jesus in. Put Him at the very center of your life. You'll never be sorry. You'll never be sorry. You'll do that. And you know how to do that? Pray for your spouse. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children. Give God an open invitation to take up residence in your household. An open invitation. Anytime. He's willing. It will make a difference. I guarantee you. It will make a difference. You see, it all comes back to what we started off with this morning. Where Jesus is, where Jesus is present, there is healing. He brings it. He wants to bring it. Simon Peter's mother-in-law discovered that, and for the past 2,000 plus years, millions of other people had discovered the same thing. When they give it to Jesus, <laughs> He heals. He brings healing. It's possible. So whether this morning, whether it's physical healing or emotional healing or the healing of a relationship, Trust Christ. Amen. Trust Christ. You won't go wrong. You won't go wrong. Yeah. And you know, healing, healing doesn't always come as we would choose. <clears throat> but a life of constant prayer will reassure us that we are not alone in this process. We are not alone. He is with us every day. Every step of the way. Amen? Amen. Amen? As I was preparing this, in fact, I think it was about Thursday, the Lord just impressed upon me in a very strong way. That we're going to be talking about healing today. That we need to give a chance. We need to give an opportunity for, for us, whoever. And I, and I don't know what what it is. I don't know what ailments, I don't know what hurts, I don't know what, what things you need healing from today. But God just impressed upon me to make a, an open door to an opportunity to open it up. And there's a song that came to my mind and I thought it was a song that we knew, nobody knows it. So I guess I'll just have to sing it for you. Carrie wrote down some, some chords. But as I sing this chorus, and if you know it, sing it with me and I'll sing it at least a couple of times. But as I sing this, this song, it's an invitation to invite you to receive healing today, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's relational, whatever it is that you're carrying, all it takes is trust. I'm nothing special. The oil that I use is nothing special. Not at all. It's a representation. It's a symbol. But as I've felt checked, I want to give you that opportunity today to stretch your faith, to trust Him today, that He can bring healing 
into your life like you've never known before. So as I sing this song, and you sing it with me, if you know it, just come to where you are right here. If this fills up, we'll go to the seats. You'll be fine. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. When you come in faith, believing, trusting in His holy.
Thank you, Lord, for these who have, who have come here today to receive a healing from you. Lord, it's not us. It's you we come to seek. Lord, I anoint in the name of the Father, the Son, the Blessed Holy Spirit. And you know what need is represented here. Lord, we give it to you today. Come in your healing presence and in your healing power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Let it be done. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, anoint you. May it be so, blessed Jesus. You know what needs is represented right here, and I pray the Father would come once again. Flow over. Make your spirit real. Make it felt. And here, I anoint in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your healing to take charge. The great healer today we bring to you. We lay it all before you. And you're abundantly able above all we ask for thank you. We give it to you and we trust that. Anoint you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh God, may your healing rest upon me. You know what it is, and we lay it before you right here. We give it to you, all of it. It's yours. As the scripture says, the battle is not mine, Lord, I give it to you, it's yours. Now may your healing take charge. As we, as we release it into you, Lord, that you take it from here. And we give you praise for it. In the strong name of Jesus. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Lord, whatever the healing is right now, take charge. We need it. We need you. More than anything else, we need you. And as we said, Lord, it's, it's not me. It's not this oil. But it's what it represents. And Lord, you become real today. And we've been in your presence. And we're, where you are, there's healing. And we ask that today in the name of Jesus. Take charge. Make it be. Make it be a reality today. In the strong name of Jesus. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you're healing. Take charge today. Body, mind, and soul for yours. Here we are. Take us. Take us as we are. You know the need that's represented right here, Father. We give it to you. We give it to you in Jesus' name. I know you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That God's will be done in and through. That the devil would be defeated. That God would be glorified through it all. Lord, today, it's your day. It's your victory time. We bring it to you. So here we are, Lord, you know exactly what is what is needed. And as we as we let go of our end, Lord, and trust you today. It's a, it's a day of trust, the day of reckoning for that, Lord. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let it be so. Your healing take charge today. Lord, it's the beginning of a new day. It's the beginning of a new time. It's the beginning. A fresh new beginning in you because of your healing power. We trust this in the name of Jesus today, Lord. Beyond, beyond what we can do, beyond what we say, beyond our prayer efforts, it's you. Amen. Anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Oh God, you know what this need is right here today, Father, we give it to you. This testimony, Lord, that we just met this morning. His testimony, Lord, you know what the healing is, need, is needed in his life. Right now, Lord, may you take charge. Your healing power above and beyond everything that we can think about, anything we can ask. Lord, you're, you're beyond us and you know it all. We give you that, Lord, we trust you today, first and foremost. And we know that you will never let us down. And so, Lord, we bring it to you today, all of it, and we lay it before you. And we're trusting you in a, with faith believing, 
Lord, it will be done according to your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you know what the healing is needed right here in God's life. Lord, we lay before you tonight, today, that Lord, you, you know, and we, we can trust your knowledge for that. So we give it to you today in the strong name of Jesus. Anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit. Lord, again, we open ourselves up for the healing that's needed today. And you know exactly what it is. So we give it to you afresh and anew. Lord, that you would come. Come in your own gentle way. We don't want to dictate to you how to do it. Or we just open ourselves up to receive it. To receive the healing that's necessary in this life. Lord, to be used mightily draw attention to you, bring glory and honor to you and to your name and to your cause. We do that today. And I know in the name of the Father, the Son, the Blessed Holy Spirit, Lord, you know the healing that is needed right here in her life today. Would you just reach down and touch her, Lord, may your spirit flow over her, I pray today, from the soul, soul of her feet, top of her head. Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. Your will be done, Lord, as it is in heaven, right here on earth. We give it to you, trusting completely in your watching care. Thank you, Jesus. I anoint you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, you know what healing is necessary as well. We bring it to you today. We're not here to draw attention to ourselves. Lord, we're here to bring you, to lift you up. Because you said if you would be lifted up, that you would draw all people to yourself. And Lord, here we are. We're asking, and again, we ask for your healing to take charge. Would you just come and bring healing? Your presence is here. And you, where you said where you are, there is healing. As your word is, is, has made it known to us. We thank you for that. Lord, and it's with great the prayer of faith that we come. And believing, Lord, for you to do the work that's needed. In the strong name of Jesus, we bring it to you today. Anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, again, we bring it to you today. It's yours. You know what's needed. So we do for us. In the strong name of Jesus, take charge. In your precious name, we pray. Anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, come in your own gentle way. In a very special way to come that your healing will be felt. Come in your presence. There is healing. We trust you, Lord. That's what you're out, Lord. It's your healing that takes charge. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' strong name. Father. We're humbled today. We're humbled by your spirit, by your presence. Thank you. Thank you for affording us this opportunity to be able to gather in your place and in your presence and to seek your healing that's needed. That you are true to your word, you're faithful, and you will see to it that it's done. Lord, as Jairus prayed, we believe, now help our unbelief. We bring it before you, and we ask that you take charge. And we leave nothing, we take nothing with us, we leave it here at your altars. And we, we're glad to know we can trust you. From this point forward, in your name, the name of Jesus, that every knee will bow and every tongue confesses, he is Lord. He is the healer. Amen.
trust we will go blessed, refreshed, knowing that His Spirit goes with us. He doesn't leave us here. <laughs> we invite Him in now to take it with us. Carry it, spread it. Because you know the old saying, love isn't love until it's given away. Joy is not joy until it's given away. Amen. And salvation is not salvation unless we share it Amen. with others. Let's do that. Now, would you stand please and receive the benediction this morning? <coughs> Thank you, brothers and sisters, for the wonderful privilege today to be able to worship in His presence and to have His presence real. I thank you for that. And now, because of our because of our worship here, may the healing power of God embolden and empower you. May it deepen and expand you. Enrich and energize you for all that God has for you this week and beyond. And until we meet again, may the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.